shifting now um, the state of world Jewry in Christian Europe during this period of the Middle Ages. Right. So that's another thing that we that people don't appreciate. You know, pre-Holocaust. You know, close to 90% of the Jewish world's population were Ashkenazim because we had a massive population switch. It didn't take place overnight. It took place over centuries. But uh, a thousand years ago, again, the vast majority of Jews are living in what we call the Edot Mizrah. We tend to use the word Sephardi, which means, which means Spain, but the majority of the Jews were not living in Spain. Spain was a central community, but they were living in the oldest diaspora community, Babylon, which is today Iraq and Persia and North Africa, and you name it. Um, so a minority of Jews, I mean, Jews are living in what we call the Ashkenazi Jewish world. Ashkenazi means German, but it's really more generally speaking Jews who lived amongst Christians. But before it was Christian, they were living in the Roman Empire because the, the, the scattering of Jews, the, the first diaspora community is Babylon, but by the time you get to the Second Temple period, that's a community that arises out of the destruction of the First Temple. By the time you get to the Second Temple period, which is primarily domination of Rome, although first the Greeks come along, um, Jews are scattered throughout the Mediterranean, and maybe a third of the Jews in the world are living in Israel, another two-thirds are a lot in Babylon, but all throughout. We find evidence of Jewish communities in Europe going back 2,000 years, and the Rhineland in Germany, some of the oldest communities. The difference being with the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in 475, which is based in Rome, I'm not talking about Constantinople today, Istanbul, the Byzantine Empire, the general situation in the empire was not good because the central authority of Rome, as oppressive as it may have been to us, produced a lot of stability, and stability is necessary for economic growth and expansion of population, and everything kind of broke down. And cities became largely emptied out of their people, and people went back to more subsistence level, and Europe goes into the Dark Ages. It's a combination of collapse of central authority, a lot of political instability, the rise of Christianity, which early Christianity is extremely hostile to Judaism, um, and a lot of basically superstitious peasants uh, means that G and Jews basically do not fare anywhere near as well, and it actually gets worse as it goes on. Um, early church fathers of Christianity are very hostile towards Jews. Gregory of Nyssa, John Chrysostom, you, write what, you see what they write about Jews, it's horrible. And as Europe is faced with any number of issues like the Black Death and things like that going back, <clears throat> Once you get to around the year 1000 or so, you're going to have open violence unleashed against Jews. So what the small Jewish population, which is only in the tens of thousands throughout all of Christian Europe, suffers very harshly. Uh, economically, Jews are going to be locked out of professions like guilds. Jews are always very skilled craftsmen and things like glass blowing is largely a Jewish art form. You know, silversmiths, any of these skilled professions, Jews have always done very well in. But as these Christian trade guilds emerge, Jews will largely be locked out of them, and Jews will suffer through any number of, uh, you know, leg pieces of legislation and, and vi even violent attacks against us that will make the situation worse and eventually explodes into open violence. I see